Can you pass me the laptop? Mm. The Oh, the Macintop? Yes, please pass I, me the Macintop. I only, you know, and you know this about me, Keith, I yeah. will only discuss Apple products by their proper brand name. And that is a Macintop Professional. <laughs> oh, <man>. Yep. <laughs> Remember this? You don't touch it long enough, it starts color cycling. Like, madness. Yeah. That symphonic masterpiece can only mean one thing. We're watching a Star Wars movie. Wait, is that what that means? We're yes. doing a let's watch of Empire Strikes Back. Can't wait to see that Wampa. Scene one. A uh, purple blob <laughs> sh- shoots, uh, shoots elephants. <laughs> oh, I guess there's no trunk. That can't be an elephant. Spy- a long- Daddy long leg. There's a theme to, to our games that, that everything every game that we're gonna play today has a daddy in it. Ah um, Welcome to Star Wars Colon The Empire Strikes Back for the Atari twenty six hundred home video computer system. Featured in the very first episode of the run button Star Wars video games let's yeah, play it, that we're starting. It was featured in the first episode, and it's also featured in the second episode. Right. Well the first episode no one no one that wasn't hasn't already seen the first episode will see the first episode. So You're really into this. You're yeah. Already, you're already partway through the game. I don't know what happened. I mean, I'm not saying I'm good at this game, but No, you're good. The last time we played this, I was like abjectly terrible at it, and now I'm I can at least kill some stuff. Yeah. The screen did disappear for us. Yeah, there is yeah, what just happened is the f- Oh, I think I'm invincible right now. This actually sounds even more like music than the last thing we did. All right, Keith. Uh, let's be real. Uh, last time we did this video, uh, you got mad at me. Yeah. Uh, so why don't you take the reins on this one and tell us what's up and what we're doing? Hi, my name is Keith Carberry from Run Button, the channel you're watching. And we're doing a Star Wars Let's Play where we play through Star Wars games. We're going to pick... The games from the enormous Star Wars video game catalog that we think will be fun or interesting to play through or play some of, and we're going to do that and then put them onto YouTube in... No! Blank screen! Um, no! For for people watching, when Kyle yells blank screen, for you it's not blank. For us it's blank. You can still see it, but it hitches up. For us, like the screen goes totally dark. Uh, that's just what happens when you're playing a video game console from 400 years ago, <laughs> hooked up through a VCR from 200 years ago, into a TV from about 10 no. years ago. Um, so this is, Kyle, the first Star Wars game, at least the first one on home console. This is the story of a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world. She looks so sad in photographs. I absolutely love her when, when she, she smiles. <laughs> and that's the end of our Star Wars Let's Play. Yeah, bye. Thank Some, you. Somehow it's going even worse than last time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is definitely the first home console Star Wars yeah. game. There was an arcade game, uh, which we should check out because it's super cool. Uh, but it was a, like a vector game. Yeah, that also, was just by called, the way, same title. Just No, it was called Star Wars. And it was called Empire Strikes Back of that. No, it's definitely Star Wars because you do the Death Star Trench Run. Oh, okay. Oh, um, you know what? There's, a, there's, another, there's another vector graphics one called Empire Strikes Back oh, okay. from 85. Um, yeah. So the, uh, the Star Wars arcade, I'm sure, came out. You have the force, see, Kyle. See, this, you're, we're already off to the Wait, wrong foot. I know something about this game. You know how it's playing the Star Wars music, and you're like, why is it doing that now? It's because you have the force. It's because I have the force. So I don't know right. what that means or what you can do with it. But Woo! I can fly real fast. Look wow, at all these at ats so we're, I, what I'm saying is we already fucked up because obviously this game, this Let's Play should have started with the actual first Star Wars game, which was the Star Wars arcade game. But this is the first home one. This is, the this first is home like, this one. is blanking out so much worse than last time, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, well, the, qu- the screen quality is so much better, and I feel like it's like a, like a tug of war sort of thing. Like, we got better screen quality, but that means that it is just going to blank out so many more times. It, it seems to happen when... When I kill an ATAT or when I get invincibility, and the 
the common thread between those two things is it's when something on screen starts like cycling through colors really quickly. Yeah. And I can't imagine why that would cause the recording device to like explode. Yep. Same. See. Yeah. Yep. It's. I don't think it's a recording device. I think it's the video game hardware. Um, so hmm. I. So I tried really hard to find some reviews of this game that came out out like around the time that the game was released. It's really hard to find anything from a print magazine yeah. from like decades ago. I think and it's even harder to find video game journalism from that. Yeah, I think I think at the time there was one magazine that was about video games. It was sort of there's actually a, ha- a handful, but oh really? Yeah, I, I there was as far as I can tell there is Electronic Gaming Magazine or Electronic Games Magazine. Um, there was Video and then. Uh, Video review magazine. Okay, and then there was uh, a couple that were just arcade focused. Yeah, that only did arcade for like like yeah like for arcade owners to yeah. like find out what they should buy. Right. Um. Or any and for nominally they were also for consumers to like look up which games to spend quarters on. But yeah, they were mostly for for people who were in the business of buying like arcade yeah. cabinets. But I do have a short paragraph from Wikipedia about the the mixed reviews that this game got upon release. Oh, really? Go yeah, ahead. and I think this is going to be interesting. I'm just going to read you the quote reception paragraph I'll, from I'll, Wikipedia. Well, real quick before you say that, yeah. I would just like to throw out that I, it's not like I'm a fucking expert in the Atari 2600 catalog, but I do own like 30 Atari games. And from my own personal experience, this seems like a pretty impressive Atari game from like yes, a technical yeah, we standpoint. Went, we went over that. Do you want to go into why you consider this a a, a more competent game technically than some other Atari games you have? Well, first of all, there's parallax scrolling, which is nuts, especially for the Atari 2600. Yeah. Like the fact that they're scrolling at all on an Atari game is usually impressive. You got like the little map thing. Uh, there's just like a lot of stuff going on that's like not. Definitely not standard function for an Atari 2600, which makes sense because this is like a pretty late era game, I think. But uh, that's mostly it. Like, it, it might be hard. It's uh, it's definitely hard to tell if you're not familiar with Atari games because this looks like total garbage. Mm. But the Atari was a system designed around garbage. garbage. Yeah. So, like, anytime you can it's, do it's anything, funny. it's amazing. It's funny. The way that they make it is that there's no actual consistency from system to system. They just build the the shell around different types of trash. Yeah, different trash. Like, I think this one has, like, a dented empty soup can inside yeah. of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I know some of the some of the better ones usually have, like, bones, old bones. <laughs> like, like not human bones, but, like, animal bones. Okay, Like a rat sure. that died and was skeletonized inside of, like, an old tire or something. Skele- oh, see, that's weird. I thought everything just had its skeleton, but I didn't realize if something dies and you want it to be a skeleton, it needs to be skeletonized. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, actually makes to, sense now that I think about it. Yeah, you have to go to the <laughs> store, get it skeletonized, and then you've got the skeleton of it. So, this is the this is just the reception paragraph from Wikipedia. And I'm I'm reading I'm reading a, like Oh, it's from reviews. Wikipedia, huh? Yeah, it's got quotes. Um I'm reading I'm re- I was looking for this stuff because I thought it would be interesting to see what people had to say about Atari games at the time. Yeah. But I'm that's why I was looking for this stuff. I'm reading this because of of the the critical review of this game is is things have not changed much in the sort of aggressive nerd category since 1982. Okay. I'll say that. Great, great. <clears throat> Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back received mixed reviews. It was reviewed in midi- video magazine shortly after its release. V- uh, reviewers praised the game's zingy graphics and noted, quote, the audiovisual effects are absolutely first rate. Overall, they characterize it as, quote, an entertaining, fast-paced contest that belongs in cartridge libraries of most VCS owners. Great. That same month, rival publication Video Review Magazine ran a review of the game written by science fiction author Harlan Ellison. Ellison blasted the game as, quote, shamelessly exploitative little toy, the latest icon Uh, of the imbecile industry uh, and a time-wasting enterprise with, quote, the potential to emerge as the most virulent electronic botulism of all. According to Ellison, the game has, quote, extremely simple-minded parameters and, quote, bored his ass off. It's an Atari game! Yeah, I know. However, the brunt of Ellison's criticism came from his uh, dissatisfaction with the game's ending. 
because the game's two end conditions are both failure conditions. Either the players, all the players' units are destroyed, or the lead enemy reaches the player's base. Ellison suggested oh, that the game cannot be won and thus is, quote, an analog for the myth of Sisyphus, providing uh, one dreadful life lesson uh, in those of a youth yeah. intelligence who play it. I, you can only <laughs> waste your life struggling and struggling, so, end quote. And I wanted to say this like when you read the first yeah, sentence, sorry, but yeah. basically this is a person in the 80s who hates video games in the 80s. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. he's just describing video games. Like, yes, absolutely. They got someone that hates video games to review video games. So basically, if you were in the 80s, if it was 1980, yeah. and you had ever played a video game before, and then you played this one, you'd be like, oh, hey, cool, this is fun. But if you were just like a science fiction writer who was a dickhead, you'd be like, this is stupid. Well, I can imagine him like playing Tetris, right? And going... Well, Tetris didn't exist yet, but yeah, sure. Okay, well, gave me a game that came out in 1982 instead of what, like 1987? Uh, I mean, there was Pong. There was Pong. Pong has a win state and thus is valid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck this guy. <laughs> Do we know what he, what, like, I know I've heard the name, but like, what is he the author of? Do we know? I think he might have written the screenplay for the Dune movie. That's my, my brain went to Dune, so... Sure. Maybe he wrote Dune. No, he did not write Dune. That oh. was uh, Herbert. Oh, wait. Full name? Uh, Hit me with that full name. Frank Herbert, maybe? Let me see. I, gotta, I have to Google it. For, yeah, Frank Herbert. Okay. Um... Yeah, as... Oh, by the way, uh, don't adjust your speakers. The audio is definitely getting louder and quieter and just <laughs> generally, like, going nuts. Who knows? Maybe this is my bad Atari. We could plug in the other Atari and see if it works better. Wow, you lost. Yeah, I lost, and you can tell because the screen flashed colors. Well, then because it's in slow motion now. Oh, uh, okay. Um... Yeah, I guess he wrote a lot of short stories. Oh, he has a video game section. I have no mouth and I must scream. Oh, it's a okay. point and click adventure game based on Harlan uh, Ellison's short story of the same title, developed by the Dreamers Guild, co designed by Ellison, and published by Cyber Dreams in 1995. Oh, I thought that was newer than that. Oh, you know I have a mouth and must scream? Yeah. I mean, I've heard the title, basically. I thought, I was, I thought that was in like the last decade or even sooner, um, but I guess I'm stupid. He has some graphic stories. He has a lot of short stories. Okay, I think yeah, we get, I think we get the idea. Guy. There's it, but there's not like there's not like some big thing that we should know about, really. I don't think so. By the way, it sounds like I have no mouth and I must scream. It's probably the thing to know about that. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know why I was connecting with Dune in my head. I don't know. So, do you want to talk a bit about like? How did you come to Star Wars? How did I come to Star Wars? Yeah. Uh, should we maybe just move on to the next game and then talk about that there? Because I feel like we got nothing left to do here. No, unless you want to look at this some more. I could watch it. I could watch this for hours. Yeah, this is actually my screensaver. Because you know how people have screensavers. Now I actually could watch this for hours. Look at this. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Ooh, look at that bar. It's all, it's got like yellow snow. I don't think the viewers at home can see the yellow snow. I think that's just your weird TV. You, this, I've noticed that this TV hates yellow. The, this is weirdly the, the hypnotic. Yeah, the recording device does cancel out a lot of the noise, <laughs> it seems like, at least from here. Well, I think the the noise that's popping up in the yellow is different than the other noise. This is thrilling. This is. All right, let's play another game. Maybe you should go back to the original recording of this one and pick out the best bits and then glom them onto this one, and then maybe together it would make one good video. Yeah, I think I was going to do that. Here's the thing. Playing this with an Atari 2600 controller is rough. 
It's just a big, stupid joystick that's stiff as fuck, and I have to move it with my right hand and press the fire button with my left hand, and that's all backwards. You flip it upside down. I could do that, but you know what I could also do, Keith? What? The Atari's controller ports are the same as a Sega Genesis controller's ports. What? And you can just use Sega Genesis controllers on the that's Atari. That's bizarre. Yeah, it was just like a standard kind of port at the time. Just a regular ass signal? Like... It's just yeah, it was just kind of one of those like this is it's one of them standard interfaces that we all decided on. Fuck you. Have I killed one of these things yet? I don't know, but you've sure changed their color. <sighs> all right, I'm switching to the good controller. Oh, you're actually not going to use the It's too hard. All right, baby. The thing was uh when I I think probably when I learned about this, I was watching like Jeff Gersman do a video where he's like, I just play my Atari games with a Genesis controller. And I was like, that's stupid. You're not getting the real experience. You need the authenticity of the original. And then I got an Atari and felt the controller. And I was like, oh, yeah, fuck this. This is terrible. You ever think about drawing Jeff Gersman as a bird and calling him Jeff Grassman? I do every week. I can't draw, so I'll never do it, but... Kyle's not ignoring me. He's just... Yeah, I was just plugging in a controller. Keith, I don't know what bird-related pun that's making. Grouse. So that's a bird? Yeah. Are we sure about this? Yeah, it's like a pheasant. Are you sure that that's a bird? Yeah. 100%. 100% it's a bird. Hey, if it's not a bird, it's doing a damn good job pretending to be one, so... There we go. 